Hey guys, uh, for once I'm actually feeling productive today and I just videoed a part one that should be coming out soon on mushroom propagation for a new material that I don't think has been considered at all in the mycological community, but it's morale time. So yesterday, some beautiful mushrooms. Here is a pheasant back. But what I think most people around this time are looking forward to are these. This right here is a beautiful specimen of a blonde morel. Uh, this was found yesterday, April, last day of April, I don't know. If it's 21st or whatever. But there is a huge debate on whether to pinch them at the bottom or just pull them out. Because some say, oh, you're going to damage the mycelium if you pull it out, so just cut it or pinch it off. And then you have others that say, actually, don't cut them, that will damage the mycelium uh, because it has to fight off an infection. So, what do I do? Well, I pull them out and then I cut off the stem buds and save them. So, that's what I have in this bag are stem buds of morels. Now, why do I say the stem buds? You can't eat them because they're too dirty. You don't want to be biting down on rocks or soil. This is why. So you can see the stem bud at the bottom of these containers. And if I carefully remove this, you can see that around the stem bud is mycelium that's running. Now some of the more astute might say, oh, that's cobweb. It looks really, really stringy. I can assure you, this is not cobweb. This is the mycelial structure of the morel. And it's running, and it's running pretty quick. This was inoculated on the 22nd, like 10 days, and it's pretty good. And it's oxygen deprived, which wouldn't really be much, but that just makes it a little harder for mushrooms to grow out so big. So I'm doing my coffee ground uh, spawn technique for morels. And I wonder if I could scale this up instead of just using this little tablespoon of coffee grounds, if I could do four tablespoons at a time, no, eight tablespoons at a time. So what I'm gonna do is, ooh, that is an illustrious, an illustrious stem bud. This is probably connected to a sclerotia. Um, I can't really tell. Yeah, it's pretty strong. I just might bury this underneath an apple tree. Yeah, I can't really pull that apart. So the way that a morel grows is it forms these underground truffles and then they'll pop right up. In fact, I think that little white bit right there is mycelium. Could be of a different mold or not. I don't know. So I'm just going to grab a couple of these smaller butts. And yeah, I'm going to grab a spoon. Oh, I just grabbed this out of the drawer. 
spam. It won't. It, the stem butts, they were in the ground. They're pretty resistant to contamination. They probably fight it, fight it off along with billions of other, not billions, there's like about 10 million species of fungus in the world. Five thousand producing a mushroom, two percent deadly. No, one percent deadly, two percent inedible. Probably a large majority of mushrooms are inedible, just because either we haven't discovered them or they're too small to deal with. Anyway, I'm gonna put the stem butts in. Now, if this process looks familiar to you, then you've probably seen my video on how I got oysters propagated on coffee brown spawn. Remove some of that air to decrease the likelihood of contaminants. And yeah, just gonna mark it down as morel. dimension yellow but yeah so what will happen is these will revert back into mycelium then it'll just run across making this basically pure morel mycelium and I can expand that like how I have been expanding my other species here is what I thought was kind of the woods, but when I was able to fruit it, it was some oyster variety. I got gypped, but hey. Okay. So that yellow right there, that is metabolites. It's a more naturalized spawn because it was exposed to the outside air, like literally outside. It's what I used to inoculate the bale. And you can see it's been regrowing just fine. Those coffee grounds were added two days ago. And you can already see they're being inoculated. So, that's how I make morel spawn. I'll be back when that's as much as a coffee tin. Now what can you do with coffee spawn? Whatever you want. What I'll probably do is I'll put it in between sheets of cardboard and stuff like that. Then in the fall just cover my entire woods and mycelium, and wood chips, and trees. Wait next year, there might be thousands more mushrooms. Hope you all have a great day, see ya.